hopefully Facebook has fixed its issues now for you as for me um, Facebook Instagram WhatsApp lots of programs have been having trouble loading pictures and videos this morning so hopefully that's all fixed for you wherever you are um, yeah so I'll just record this and you can watch it later if not um, yeah so I've been pretty busy even though I haven't been here I can't believe it was May the last time that I did one of these uh, yeah it's just time flies <laughs> what's going on but I have time today school holidays good morning um, so I can hop on and show you a few things a few exciting things tell you a few exciting things and um, yeah let's get started <laughs> Okay, so I've got a couple of things I can talk to you about but I can't actually show you because I don't have them in my hands anymore. One is the football I showed you last time. Um, that's now all finished. What I did was I covered a, an Australian rules football um, with crochet. So it's basically, it was, I put a photo on my Facebook page yesterday so you can go and have a look later on if you like. Um, basically flowers, roots, seeds. It's all about transformation, the, the thing I did it for. Um, so it was part of... Um, let me read my notes. <laughs> um, it's now on display along with lots of other, good morning, lots of other footballs transformed by artists. They've been painted and they're amazing. There's so many of them that look fantastic. There's a special um, shipping container, specially designed to display the footballs in Mount Gambia near Main Corner and the Sinkhole Garden. Um, the opening was last Friday night. I couldn't go, unfortunately. I had something else on. Um, but the, uh, there is an auction for all of the footballs. <laughs> they do. <laughs> All of the footballs up now and I'll, I'll put a link down to, below to everything I'm trying to talk about I won't say that again but I'll put a link in the comments later where you can go have a look at the footballs and if you like you can make bids on any of them including mine <laughs> to raise money for youth opportunities now youth opportunities is a an organization a not-for-profit um, organization running out of Mount Gambia well they have branches everywhere but the Mount Gambia branches where I got involved um, and they work with um, disadvantaged youth and give them mentorship training, leadership skills to get them going on the, get them going with their lives. Um, and they do a really great job. They have lots of kids, I think about 150 just in the area each year that they deal with. And yeah, it's a really worthwhile cause. Um, yeah, um, um, but the exciting, well, <laughs> for me, <laughs> I was even in the paper. This is the South of the Mount Gambia, the Border Watch paper. <laughs> Here I am. Turning to kick my football. <laughs> so yeah, that was a nice little article about me and the thing. And yeah, so there's even um, other people have been involved, famous people have been involved in creating footballs and inspiring the designs of footballs and things. So yeah, that was fun to do. Good to do something completely different. Okay, next thing. Um, my Radiance crochet rug pattern that's been out for whew, about four years now, I think. I did it originally in a yarn that I just picked up on Impulse when I was at Spotlight once. Um, it was an acrylic yarn, and since then I've decided I don't really like using acrylic yarns, and I've always wanted to remake it because it was one of my favourite patterns. I still love it. But I just never had time with everything else that's gone on in the last few years. Um, but recently I had a little bit of downtime. So I sourced some rope, a three millimeter rope from String Harvest in Queensland. That's recycled cotton rope. And I remade the pattern. And it looks fantastic. Oh, well, I think it looks fantastic. So it's, I'm not going to be able to show you the whole thing. It's quite heavy. So it's got all these points on it, star points. Oh, it really is heavy. <laughs> yes. So that's all been done. It's been, it, I really, really like it. I had my friend Joe in Port Ferry do some photos for me, which are really cool. I put one up on my Facebook page the other day. You might have seen. Um, hello. And I, <laughs> so I'm sneaky watching while at work. I'm naughty. Um, yeah, so while I was making it, I, um, I remembered that when I was making designing the original one, I did want to stop earlier because I liked the shape of it, but it was too small with the acrylic yarn. This is a little bit, this is a bit bigger making it in the rope. So what I did was when I finished this, I went back and I ordered some more <laughs> three millimeter rope from String Harvest in a different color and stopped it smaller. Um, so it's kind of got a scallopy edge. It's kind of stretching out because I'm holding it up, but it doesn't stretch out like that. 
it looks really cool um, in the photo that my friend Jo did for me. She's put it in a, a really a modern bathroom. It's not my bathroom. I wish it was. <laughs> you can see these really cool tiles and things. Um, I'll put a photo of that up this afternoon, I think. So yay, remade, redone. So while I did remade the actual samples, I've also uh, revamped the pattern. So if you already have the digital pattern, you should have received an email from me um, last week with a, a link to download the new updated pattern. So the new updated pattern has, is much prettier. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. It is It has charts as well now. I had charts made for the pattern. It's got all the info you need if you want to make the rope versions as well as the acrylic yarn version. Um, what else? Oh, it's got the new photos and it's all just much, much nicer. Um, and at the same time, I've also created a print version, which is condensed and shorter, but I'll tell you about that a little bit later on. So, yay, all done. And I'm really, really happy with it. Um, it's just one of those things that really has been on my mind to do for a long, long time, and it feels so good to get it done. So, yay, radiance, all done. <laughs> okay, exciting news. Let, let's start with this one. So, Granny Square Flare. My book released almost a year ago now. Um, still, amazing things are happening because of it. Um, I found out a little while ago, thanks to Jazzy. Hi, Jazzy, my roommate from the New Zealand cruise I went on, that this little book, my little baby book, has been nominated for the British Knit and Crochet Awards this year, which is amazing. <laughs> I, yeah, I've seen the awards before. Um, Deirdre who you know, Sophie's Universe, etc. Um, she's won, it a couple, won an award a couple of times as favourite designer, that sort of thing. So I was aware of the awards, but I had no idea that my book was even up. So apparently what happened is earlier in the year, the people who organise it, called the organisation called Let's Knit, they do um, crochet and knit magazines, they put out the call for nominations for all different categories, favourite yarn stores, designers, books, all that sort of stuff. And then after a certain time frame, they shortlisted all of the, the names that they got and come up with a list for people who are up for the award and so my, my book is in there so thank you everybody who put my book up there I didn't even know that was happening um, and the way that the awards are awarded is um, by a public vote so there is um, voting is open now on all the short lists and all the different categories till 29th of August now I don't know if votes outside of the UK count um, I don't know <laughs> um, I know that there is a prize for voting that you have to be in the UK to be eligible to win but a lot of people have been telling me from around the world they have voted so I don't know if you want to go over and vote it doesn't have to be for my book for all there's lots of other really cool ones nominated in the same category um, then go for it <laughs> oh thanks Melissa <laughs> yeah so I'll put a link down below later on to that as well but the other exciting news for this now this is a paperback book um, done this way for purely for um, cost reasons because it's way more expensive to create a hardcover book but the publisher the self-publisher people oh thank you <laughs> who I print this through contacted me and offered to set up the title as okay cool thanks Melissa so Melissa who's in Australia she voted in the awards and she got an email saying thanks for voting so she guesses it counts so cool thank you <laughs> anyway I got an email from the publisher offering to set up this type this as a new title in hardback. So it's currently being produced now. So very shortly, this will be a lot more be available in a lot more a lot sturdier version. Um, it will still it will be more expensive because production of a hardcover book is way more like way way more than it is for a paperback. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that price is yet. I have to wait till it's all finalised, but that's pretty exciting. So I had to get new ISBNs and all that kind of stuff because each a different a hardcover counts as a different version. So yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. So if you want a sturdier version for your <laughs> for your bookshelf to keep, um, that will be available soon. I'll let you know. I can't wait to get one in my hands actually to see it. So that's pretty cool. Um, what else is there? Aha, new books. Okay, so. I'll do this one first. <laughs> so a little while ago this year, earlier this year, I did the Beneath the Surface Crochet Along Project. 
and lots of you did it and it looked fantastic there's some there's a really amazing like super bright rainbow version posted in my facebook group the other day it's like all different all the squares are different really bright colors with a, a dark color doing the surface crochet on it it looks fantastic anyway um so well the the pdf that we created for this <laughs> Oh, that's cute, Sam. Sam's saying she'd like one because her daughter reads them as bedtime stories. <laughs> that's cute. Anyway, the PDF that we created for um, Beneath the Surface, when I say we, I say Michelle, my graphic designer lady, friend. Um, it was pretty much formatted how a print book can be. So we thought, hey, why not make it into a print book? So Beneath the Surface, it's, it's very little. It's 38 pages. Beneath the Surface, UK, US terms, is now available in book form. Well, Pre-order. I'm going to release it. The release date, the official release date is the 19th of July. Bendigo Wool and Sheep and Wool Show. But if you would like a, a hard copy of, of the book, um, so I can try and go through it a little bit. So you can see it's, it's exactly the same, pretty much. There's a few little differences. Um, but it's all everything for beneath the surface is now in here. Even the all the hints and tips, the layout, the charts. Um, all nice and big so you can see them and even all the round by round photos so it's a great book for beginners because all the information you need is in there so how to work out your yarn and all that sort of stuff that I provided in it is in there so this is my entry level you know if you can do a granny square and want to move on this is what I would recommend you do next I think now yeah? because it has all the video support and everything as well so yeah this is available in my shop for pre-order now, or you can get the digital version if you have been able to. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> for a long time. So, yeah, that's exciting. I like it. It's good to have something in your hands, I think. But what you're all waiting for, I know, is this one. Yay. <laughs> Siren's Atlas. It's all done. It's all finished. Um... I ordered and they have just arrived in time for Bendigo, which is in oh, it must be two weeks today. I'll be there, I think. So yay. So again, available for pre-order now in my shop if you're in Australia. Um, and I will send it to you after I get back from Bendigo because I need to take everything I have with me to Bendigo because I have no idea how many I need. Um, and yeah, but if you're not in Australia and you would like to order this, it's available for pre-order on Amazon UK, Amazon in the US. On Barnes and Noble in the US, so I think it's number number three in the new releases or soon to be anyway on Amazon. I looked at that this morning because it's exciting. <laughs> so again, US and UK version. They look pretty similar, but down the very bottom there, I know it's backwards. So you've got UK version term condition. So let me show you and tell you a little bit about it. All right, so there's the front, and here's the back. So this is, let me read the back for you. <laughs> so Sirens Atlas is your guide to crocheting an ocean of granny squares inspired by the colours of the high seas. Each of the 64 patterns is a fun new take on the traditional granny square named after a sea, ocean or body of water around the world. Perfect for the intermediate or ex expert crocheter looking for a challenge and to improve their crochet skill and knowledge. So there you go, that's the back. So there's the original Sirens Atlas collection had 52 patterns. I've designed 12 more that are just in this book. It's the only place you'll find them. Um, it's not the same as Granny Square Flare in that in Granny Square Flare, there was a lot of information in the beginning about your hooks and your yarns and little tips and tricks, how to join, a little border, all kinds of information. Because this is for people who already know what they're doing, none of, that's not included. But having said that, there is still some stuff at the beginning that I think I need to include because it's specific to my patterns. So let's have a little look. It's really cute. I mean, the idea is that there's a, a siren, a mermaid siren swimming around the oceans and she needs a map to get around. So that's why it's called Siren's Atlas. So with Michelle, my graphic designer, sorry, I have a really itchy nose today. I'm sorry, I keep itching it. Um, have it created an old world map feel for it. So we've got these old illustrations of mermaids and things and islands. Michelle's created all of these maps for me. Um, so the whole thing, it's sort of got a parchment, probably a bit hard to see in there, but it's like a yellowy parchment old map sort of feel. Um, that's where I talk about the inspiration for Sirens Atlas and 
bit of a history of sirens. So sirens actually didn't weren't originally fish. They were actually half bird, half half women. Yeah. So anyway, I know a little bit about that. <laughs> but then, as I said, there are, are still some things that you do need to know if you're new to my pattern. So I've talked a little bit about you know what yarn and hook I use, like a little bit. That's it. Not pages and pages like the other book. Um, what you need to know. If you've, little options and things that might be a little bit different to your traditional crochet I talk about there um, how to read my patterns and charts because I write mine in a very specific way and so that's all included in there cute little zippy pouch <laughs> um, talk about stitch counts and how they're different did you love that photo it's so cool Joe did, did such a great job with the photos um, yeah all that sort of stuff and then as you've seen there's been a few photos through the thing here's another one now rather than have a list of uh, projects as you know here's this project and here's how to make it I've just said granny squares are not just for blankets you can make cushions scarves bags garments the only limit is your imagination but then I've given all of the yarn information for the projects that I have done so you know for example this wrap here I've said I've used Great Ocean Road Woolen Mill, Lobella, Alpaca and Merino, four ply in the grey colour. I used a six millimetre hook. The layout was three by 11 squares and I used this pattern Cortez on page 23. So you know what you're doing if you have this book. So that is enough information for you to be able to make that if you want to make it exactly or change it to do it whatever you like. So all of the, the sampler blankets, all that sort of stuff, I've got given the yarn information and hook information there. And then it's into the patterns. So the index pages are fun. I like them. So Michelle's created. We've got an index here, a photo of the square and the name of it and what page it's on. Then we have a world map. And it, each one is numbered. It's probably a bit hard to see, but there are numbers all on the map. So if you crochet these in order, you actually take a trip around the world. I know that's silly and fun, but that probably means something only to me, but I thought that was cute. <laughs> So that's 32 patterns and then there's another 32, it's making 64. So you end up by going around Antarctica. There's a lot of oceans and little bays and things that I've named patterns after there. If you have a look around Australia, you can see lots of numbers there, but they really are all around the world. So yeah, and then it's onto the patterns. So you'll notice that the patterns, they're all done in my blues and the charts have been made to reflect that as well. <laughs> so um, the patterns are written for, for the colour changes because these are my blues. I've used Bendigo Woolen Mills cotton. I should have the sample blanket here to show you, but I don't. How silly was that? So anyway, the patterns are written for the colour changes. You can do whatever you like because you know what you're doing. That's not a problem. Um, yes, so there's 64. Let me try and where's one of the new ones. I've shown you the new ones in person before. Yeah, that's one of the new ones. There's Poro. Which just might be the one we, one of the ones we're doing on the cruise if you're coming in October. Um, yeah, so there's lots of patterns, lots of patterns, lots of patterns. Oh yeah, and at the top of each one, there's a little bit of information about the sea, the longitude and latitude of the of the ocean, and a, and a close up of the world where the where the um, the sea is. So that was really cool. <laughs> Cute little baby bum. <laughs> And then we have a glossary that has all of the stitches, all of the symbols explained in words as well as the symbol for them. So you can follow it along. Then we have this page here, yarn information. So this is the specific um, meter, meters that I use for each color for each square listed. So this is where you find the details of the yarn I use to make all of the squares. Of course, you can use any yarn and hook combination you like. But if you use similar to me, then this is how much yarn you will need for each. Each square is listed individually with the yardage for each one, and there's totals down the bottom as well. And then we have the thank yous and a little bit about me and this photo here. I really love this photo. It was taken in Millsford Sound um, by Kirsten for me when we were on the cruise. So that's lovely. <laughs> um, thank you for that, Kirsten. So that's it that is my book so as I said because there's a lot um, there's no projects and uh, less information at the front it's a little bit thinner so 
same grain of square flare. Thanks, Sam. Um, but it's uh, again the the meat of the book are the 64 patterns. So there's actually more patterns in it, and hopefully that's inspired you to maybe get a copy for yourself if you if you would like. Um, I need to say too that. If you um, one of those wonderful people who purchased the complete collection of Sirens Atlas originally when it was released back in 2017, you should have received an email from me with a link to download the digital PDF version for free now, which is also available for free. Uh, not for free. It's available to purchase in my shop now. You don't have to wait till the book's released. Um, but if you would like a, a Kindle or Kobo or e-reader, some other description version, they're coming, they're just not quite ready yet. So yay, that's that. <laughs> Exciting. Um, yes, so yes, you can pre-order it now. I'll post it when I get back from there. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those of you who've already ordered it. It's really cool. <laughs> All right, uh, written patterns. Now, because I'm going to Bendigo in a couple of weeks, I should really haven't realised it was a couple of weeks until I said that before. Um, as well as having the three books, so you know, beginner, intermediate and advanced, the three books there, um, I will also have some written patterns. So what I've done is I've taken seven of my patterns, including radiance, and I've condensed the, the important part, the written part that you need in front of you when you're crocheting, down to as short as possible and printed it out. So the thing is, my patterns, they're, they're quite long. They were never intended for printing. Um, if you purchase the original, you know, like the Mayan blanket, for example, the PDF is 80 pages long. 80 pages. <laughs> because it's got so much help. It's got round by round photos, it's got charts, it's got help, hints and tips on the tricky parts that you might get stuck on. It's got so much extra information that you don't actually need in front of you when you're crocheting. You only need the written pattern in front of you when you're crocheting. And I always have condensed that part in, in my patterns so that you can just print those pages. But still, there are, um, some people don't realise you can do that. You can only print, you can only choose to print some pages. Some people still think you have to print the whole thing. And I do get requests quite often for um, printed versions. Well, I get the pattern in the mail. <laughs> so I've decided that I will do that thing. So this is the mine one. And I've condensed it down into, so you've got all your abbreviations that are in there, a little bit of an introduction, and then it gets straight into the pattern. So you can have all that next to you, right next to you as you're going. The pattern, the pattern, the pattern. And then on the back, it's got all the yarn information and it's got a code for you, that you so you can go and download. If you buy this from me in person, you can go and download the digital version and you'll have all the help online. So. If, you, if you're on, say, you know, round, I don't know, 21 and you're not quite sure what to do, you can go get your device, your computer, have a look at the PDF. All oh, right, there you go. You can blow up the chart. You can have a look at the photos without the need to print them and waste paper and ink because it's expensive printing. So that's that. I will have patterns for sale at Bendigo. That's just one of them. So I will have, hooray, hello. I will have the Mayan, Giantess, This Charming Boy, the Baby Blanket, um, Mill Pond, the White Gum Wool Blanket they did last year, um, Radiance, as well as Spectrum and Swell, which were two um, bag patterns that I did a year or two ago, can't remember. <laughs> anyway, um, but also I will have a very limited number. When I say limited, I say seven. Um, kits available for the Spectrum bag. That's the, a rainbow bag. It's quite an easy thing to project, but um, I've had the yarn here with the, I was going to do a workshop that just never happened. So rather than just hold the yarn here, I'm not going to make seven more bags myself. I thought I'd just kit them all up, get the pattern and all the yarn you need to make it at the show. But as I say, only seven. So maybe I'll see you then. <laughs> but with that. Um, yes, but the other thing is I've actually put, for all the seven of those, I've also put these in my online shop um, so you can either you can choose to purchase the print and digital or just the digital if you choose to the print and digital I will post this to you worldwide as for free postage um, because it's just a letter so it's not a biggie <laughs> it's 
but yeah that's all happening now on my, my pattern shop if you want to go and have a look uh, speaking of pattern shop I've just made, recently made a very small change that some of you may have noticed and some of you may not I'm still spin cushions I've been spin cushions in all the online places forever and I'll, and I'll just keep that I'm not going to change that but it doesn't reflect what I do now it did when I created the, that name <laughs> um, because I was making felt pin cushions I haven't made a felt pin cushion in years and years and years and years so when you go to my blog and see spin cushions with a crochet hook it doesn't really make sense and I'm a person I'm me I'm the one who's designing these things so it's time to come out from behind that spin cushions and say crochet designs by Shelly husband so that's what my banners I'll say if you have a look at my Facebook page that's what it says there it says it on the top of my shop and the top of my blog now so yeah hello it's me <laughs> I'll still be spin cushions everywhere but crochet designs by Shelly husband is a better reflection of what I actually do so there's that all right um so that's that okay October is coming up soon I've been talking to Joe this week Joe Patton about the cruise hi <laughs> it's she hi Sandra Sandra's going to be coming along as well so on the 9th of October which is a Wednesday I believe Wednesday yes um, We'll be hopping on the Radiance of the Seas in Sydney and going out to sea for three nights. We'll be back on Saturday and we'll be doing crochet. There'll be, I'll be doing, I'll be doing four lots of workshops, morning and afternoon. So if you do, you might do mornings with me and you might do afternoons with Sue Daly, who's doing some hand sewing workshops or Paula, who's doing some sock loom, sock knitting. Um, so if you're coming along on the cruise there's a kit that you get everything you need to make in your, in your workshops there'll be a copy of the book if you're doing the crochet ones and yes it will be super fun there's a few spots left I'm not sure exactly how many um, but there are a few spots left and it's really fun it's a really beautiful ship I much prefer Radiance of the Seas to the carnival ship I went on earlier in the year um, the food is amazing <laughs> and it's it's really lovely it's a really lovely ship so uh, maybe you can join me because this it literally is the last chance to workshop with me for a bit of a while um, so hopefully I will see some of you there we'll be making some squares from the book and yeah I think lots of fun I've been reminiscing a little bit about the New Zealand trip the last couple of days someone posted a photo in the Facebook group of me being an idiot and Jazzy, my roommate, being silly, and all these people in the background looking at us like we were nuts. <laughs> it just made me laugh, and it it just it was just the best time. Um, and I can't wait to do it all again. So hopefully, I will see you soon <laughs> on one of those. <laughs> okay, so that's all that making wise. I had something else that I had finished that I can't show you because it's gone. So a couple of years ago, I started making a blanket for my middle daughter. When she left school, um, she left school at the end of 2017. I started making it before I started making it before she left, before she finished. She chose the pattern and the yarn and everything. And I made most of the blanket and it was pretty much finished by December last year, which is still way too long. <laughs> and then I didn't touch it until the weekend just gone. I picked it up. All I had to do was do the edging. It's just nuts. I don't know why it took me so long to pick it up. But I did it and she came home to visit on the weekend and it's finished and she's taken it with her. So yeah, a bit more than one and a half years to do, but it was fantastic. I did them as I posted a photo, a couple of photos the other day on my Facebook page. You can go and have a look if you like. Not my colours at all, a lot of maroon and mustard and but they colours work really well. She chose them, her colour scheme. So it's really cool. Um, so I did that. I think I showed you last time that I'd done some squares and I was going to make cover them a cushion. So here it is. So this is squares from Siren's Atlas on this side. That's another new one, Cortez. That's one of the ones we're probably doing on the cruise, I think. Um, is it Colo? Yep. And on the other, this is in the Origins range of Tandy wool. And on the back, it's the natural wool. And these are all books, patterns from Granny Square Flare. 
So that's done. I'm going to give that to Tandy. I might take it to Bendigo if it'll fit in my car. I'm not sure if I'm going to fit everything in my car. <laughs> um, anyway, we'll see. But otherwise, I don't have any other, well, I say I don't have any other projects. I don't have any other projects that I'm keen to work on that I'm, that I want to get finished that I have started. Um, I think there's only one, it's like a jumper I started when I was doing a book review last year and I think I've fallen out of love with the thing. So I'm just sitting on it for a while. I might pick it up and might not, but I have been knitting. I've been doing my timely cardigan and I have finished one sleeve. Hooray. So that's a cardigan. Um, I've got to do the other sleeve and then I have to do the band, um, button band. And it's meant to have buttons all the way down, but I think I'm only going to do three. So I never do buttons all the way up on a cardi. I only ever do the top few up anyway. So I'm pretty excited about that. I've done it I'm using Great Ocean Road Woolen Mill Labella, which is merino and alpaca. And it's lovely and soft. It's so nice. I can't wait to wear it up. So I'm on track. That sleeve didn't take me all that long. I've discovered small circumference um, knitting needles. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Barb is working her way through Granny Square Flare. It's her 2019 project. She's enjoying it. Thank you, Barbara. That's cool. Um, yes, so I'm enjoying this. I have enjoyed, I've made mistakes and I, yeah, <laughs> it's all good. It's very me. Yeah, so it should be ready for Bendigo. It should be ready for Bendigo. <laughs> um, and that's about it. Um, my app that I mentioned last time, I still haven't had time to rebuild it. I'm going to maybe look at that this afternoon. So sorry if you're trying to use that and it's not working. It's complicated and it's expensive. And I'm just, I'm actually tossing up whether I do it or not, to be honest. Um, the platform I was using was relatively cheap. I had to pay for it, but it was relatively cheap compar comparing to what I can find as alternatives now. Like we're talking $760 for a year um, for me to have a, an app for free for you guys. So, yeah, I'm thinking about it. I, I do want to do it because it, I think it's a good way to connect with everybody and it's an easy way for people to connect with me as well. Um, but, yeah, I've got a few other things planned that might tie in well with redoing it, so I will see. Anyway, that's about it. Um, does anybody have any questions? Because that's about it for me today. Um, I'm not sure if I'll have anything to show. Like, as I say, I'm all, my only project at the moment is this. Um, I do have, I, my brain is starting to think about what's next. And I do have a few ideas. Um, but I'm not ready to start on anything yet. I want to get that cardigan finished and do a bit of tidying up. Um, yeah, so I, don't, I really probably won't have very much to show. But we'll see. Who knows? I might, I might decide to start something new tomorrow. Who knows? <laughs> um, somebody did ask a question before and I missed it. I'm just going to see if I can scroll down. Sorry, excuse me. Um, you're all so lovely. <laughs> um, um, um. Yes, my daughter did love the blanket. I can't find the question. Maybe I'm imagining things and maybe I answered it. Sorry. Oops, sorry. <laughs> yeah, she did love the blanket. She was very patient waiting for me to make it for her. And she took it home with her. She has a very, very cold room in, her, in the house that she's living in. So every extra layer can help. <laughs> All right. I think that is about it. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for popping by. Um, I'll put the links down below. I've, I've already put them all out. I can see the copy and paste into the comments, the links to everything I spoke about today. Hopefully I'll see some of you on the cruise or at Bendigo. Make sure you come and say hi if you're at Bendigo. I'm going to be in the Oval Marquee. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> ah, 97 sleeps to the October cruise. Crikey. Thanks, Sandra. I'll see you there. I'll see you there. <laughs> all right. Have a wonderful day. And I'll see you soon, hopefully. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, I will. <laughs>